Lift him up. Come on, come on, see lift him up. Amen. 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 Lift him up. Pennsylvania, born on May, 20, May 17, 1955, 
He is the sixth of 11 children born to the late Deacon John DeVoe, Sr. and Josephine Grove DeVoe. <clears throat> he enjoyed 21 years of marriage with the late Vanessa E. Griffin DeVoe, who was called from labor to rest in March of 1990. They were blessed with four children, Sean M., Delana D., Stephen J., and Edwin E. He was also blessed with two granddaughters, Shalina and Shanaza, a grandson, Trey John, and daughter-in-law, Amina. Educated in the Coatesville Area School District, Reverend DeVoe is a 1974 graduate. Reverend DeVoe attended Westchester University of Westchester, Pennsylvania, and is a graduate of the Grace Bible Institute of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Reverend DeVoe's religious affiliations include involvements in the Ministers, Deacons, and Wives Union of Baltimore, Cecil, and Harper Counties, and he is currently the moderator of the Salem Baptist General Association. God bless both pastor and congregation. It has truly been that. I'll ask you if you would stand and, and give the pastor an ovation, a standing ovation.
We're going to start reading with verse number 3. Second Kings in the Old Testament, chapter 7. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait a minute, Pastor. Amen. We want to make sure that everybody is with us. Today for a topic I'd like to talk about a commitment crisis. A commitment crisis. Yes, amen. Let's call for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. Lord, we ask that you would have your way with us today. That you would correct bad behaviors and that you would put us on a path all straight. Lord, we ask that we'll be different leaving today than when we have come through the door. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. It's in the name of Christ that we do pray. Amen. Amen. A commitment Christ. There seems to be a famine in the church. A famine of commitment. It's important for us to realize that many times we come to church and we try to determine how well we're doing based upon what we see somebody else doing. We try to determine if we are making it through this life okay based upon what we see other people having other people involved in. But the name of the game is to make sure that you line up with the Word of God. Because one day we do have to stand before the righteous judge himself and give an account for how we lived our lives on this side. And if you're going to please God, it's going to require that you have some commitment. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. We must first believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. And if you're going to commit to the Lord, you've got to learn how to live by faith and not by sight. Faith is gained by what we do. And it's important that we understand very clearly that you may not always see the way, but when you've got God on your side, you got everything that you need in order to make it in this life. It's important for us to understand that in this passage, the city of Samaria is in the predicament that it's in because of a lack of commitment to God. Maybe you find yourself today in that predicament as a result of some things that aren't quite right because you really haven't committed yourself to the Lord. Maybe you've got some problems on your job. Maybe you've got some problems in your marriage. Maybe you've got some problems with finance. Maybe you've got some problems with taking the time to learn the Word of God. You want to be reassured today that if you commit yourself to the Lord, He can help you move through any difficulty that you have in through your life. There seems to be a famine that's going on. And in this passage we find that there is a famine in the city of Samaria. Yeah. That yeah. there's not enough to eat. Yeah. Uh, well, when we look at it, we find that the Armenian army has surrounded the city and is not allowing any goods or supplies to go into the city or to come out of the city. Yeah. And as a result, they are there and they're not able to change their situation. Uh -huh. When we read the passage, if you go back, and I would encourage you to go back and read chapter 6 and chapter number 7, you find that things are so bad that a mother has decided to eat her child because of the severity of the family. Yes, that people are there and they are in desperation because they don't have enough money to buy any food because food is so expensive that they can't even afford it. It's important for us to understand that when we read this passage, we find them in a crisis. Yeah, yeah. A crisis is any event or series of circumstances which 
threatens a church's well-being and interferes with its daily routine. It's a crisis. Uh, we're experiencing a crisis in our churches today. It's a crisis of commitment. People won't commit anymore. They won't show up for Bible study. They won't come to Sunday school. Their name is on the roll, but many times they don't show up even to find out the building is in the family. And we've got to remember that the purpose of the church is to win souls to Christ. I said the purpose of the church, the main focus of the church, the first ministry of the church is the soul winning. We've got to be reminded that the church is the only organization that exists on the face of the earth to usher people into a personal relationship with Christ. It's what the church must be committed to. Not to having annual days in order to raise money. It is not designed to have fashion shows and baby It's not designed to have choir 